In this video, I'll teach you how to visualize products in Blender to get paid. We're going to model and texture this perfume bottle from scratch. And if you want to learn more about the tools and techniques that you're going to see me use in this video, I put everything that I know about Blender modeling in my ebook. So check that out. The link is below. First, we're going to go to Google and we're going to search for this perfume in the image search. We're going to take the first cool picture, right click, save image as, save this anywhere to your computer. Now in Blender, you're going to go to front view and with shift A, you're going to add a new image reference. Find this picture wherever you save it, double click it, and it's now going to be open as a reference in Blender. Throw that shit in the background. I'm going to go over here to object data properties, check opacity and reduce that a little bit. Now it's not so bright that it hurts my eyes anymore. Let's lift it up on the Z axis so it's sitting on top of the X axis. Then we're going to take this default cube and lift it up on the Z axis. Go to edit mode with tab, S to scale it and only scale it on the X axis to make it a little bit wider. And it looks like we have to align this reference image with the center of the world a little bit better. So we're going to go back to object mode with tab, select this image, move it on the X axis with G and X. And we're gonna have to move it to the left a little bit so that it aligns with the cube. Now select the cube again, go to edit mode, press Z to enter wireframe view. Now with your box select tool, select all the geometry at the top, lift it up with G and Z and move these vertices up here until they meet the top of the bottle in the reference image. Now we're going to scale this down a little bit on the Y axis. I don't know how wide this is supposed to be, but I don't really care. I think something like this looks reasonable. Now with control R, we're going to add three loop cuts up here, one loop cut this way and a couple loop cuts over here. And we're trying to add enough loop cuts so that we have perfect squares all over this shape. They don't got to be perfect, but it's gotta be pretty close to square. Now go up here to the edge menu while everything is selected. Click on subdivide, then go over here to the modifier properties, add modifier, generate subdivision surface. Set the levels value to two, select these faces in the middle of the top surface, move them up with G and Z, then in vertex select mode, take these vertices on the corners and lower them down on the Z axis a little bit. That way we're not going to have twisted faces here, but they're going to stay straight. Now we're going to select this surface up here, inset that with I, then go up here to edit preferences, add-ons, type in loop tools and check this box right here, close this, press N to open this menu and go to edit, open up loop tools and click circle. Now your geometry is arranged in a circle. We're going to scale this down a little bit with S and move it up on the Z axis like this. We don't want to lift it up too much. So try to do something like this. Let's also extrude it up a little bit with E, press S and Z and zero to scale this to zero on the Z axis and make it perfectly flat. We can delete this surface from the top here because we're not going to see it anyway. Let's also take these faces from the sides here and let's lower them down a little bit like this. Go up here to object, shade smooth, take these edges over here and slide them out with double G. Do the same thing over here on the other side. I think this is pretty good for a very basic shape. If you want to make these edges here a little bit sharper, here's how you do that. With Alt right click, you're going to select one of the sharp edges here. Press Shift G, select similar face angles. Open up this little menu down here and set the threshold value to something like 0.1. That's not good enough, so let's try 0.3. And now we have all the sharp edges selected. With Control B, we're going to bevel them. And once you bevel them, then all these edges are going to be noticeably sharper. Next, let's make this lid up here. In edit mode, we're going to select this edge loop at the top here. With shift S, we're going to snap the cursor to select it. Then go back to object mode. With shift A, add a new circle. We're going to give that circle 96 vertices. Now in edit mode, scale it down so it's a little bit bigger than this neck here. Lower it down like this. Press E to extrude. Right click to cancel this. And then lift it up on the Z axis until it comes up to around here somewhere. We can check our reference from front view to get the right height here. It doesn't have to match the reference perfectly. I think this is good enough. Now with control R, we're going to add enough loop cuts so that we turn these faces into squares again. For me, this is 10 loop cuts. For you, it might be something different. With Control S, we're going to save this. Remember to quick save this all the time because what we're about to do might make Blender crash. I don't know why Blender 4.0 crashes all the time. In fact, I don't even know why the fuck they updated to Blender 4.0. They didn't add any improvements anyway. But whatever, let's go back to edit mode and select everything with A. Then press I to inset and I one more time to inset individually. You're going to make these faces a little bit smaller like this. Then in face select mode, we're going to use Alt S to push them inwards a little bit like this. Second thought, I think it's probably going to be better if we use Alt S to push them outwards a little bit like this. Like this. Now we're going to press N and edit. We're going to click on circle and adjust the angle value here to something like 22. Now all these faces are going to be a little bit twisted. Then we're going to inset them again with I and press Alt E, extrude individual faces and move them inwards a little bit like this. While these faces are still selected, we're going to go up here to the item menu, set the mean crease to one, control E, mark sharp. Now make sure to save this because it's probably about to crash. Add modifier, generate subdivision surface, select everything.
starting with A, go up here to Edge, click on Subdivide, Object, Shade Smooth, and into each of these holes later on, we're going to insert a little diamond or something similar. Let's disable the Subdivision Surface modifier for now so it's faster to work with this. We're going to select this edge loop at the top, extrude, right click, and scale this down a little bit. Do the same thing here at the bottom. Bring a loop cut out to the side like this, and also one up here. And now we have to make this black part of the cap. Shift S to snap the 3D cursor to the middle of this cylinder here. Now with Shift A, we're going to add a new plane. Lift that so it's on top of the cylinder like this. Scale it down in edit mode. It has to be just slightly larger than the cylinder. Now extrude this up until here somewhere. Select this face at the top. Activate the shear tool. And first we're going to pull this side down. Then we're going to pull this one up. Now we can just adjust the Z-axis scale. Move this a little bit lower. We're going to join these two vertices with J. And from side view, I can see that we have to lower this one down a little bit further. And now we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier with control 2 or control 3. Take all these edges around here at the top. Also the edges around the bottom and the edges on the corners like this. With control B, we're going to bevel that. Scroll up a little bit until you have two segments. You can make sure you got two segments in this menu over here. Set the shape value to one. Let's pull all of this up a little bit further on the Z axis. Go to object, shade smooth, and now we got the top of this gap. Next, we gotta do something about these shapes over here on the side. Before we start adding these shapes on the side here, we have to observe the dent in the side of this bottle. On Google Images, I found another picture of this perfume bottle, and you can see what I'm talking about over here. So we're gonna go to edit mode. With K, I'm going to activate my knife tool. Click right here, then press C to cut through, and I'm going to click again up here, but I'm going to make sure that I get an intersection right here. You're going to know that's there when this turns red. Click here, hit enter. We're gonna do the same thing down here, and this time I want to intersect with this vertex. Click, enter, and now we can start making this shape. First of all, we're gonna take these vertices and slide them up with double G, then take these down here and slide them down with double G. Then take this entire edge segment and slide it up with double G. Take this one and slide it down. Now we're gonna select everything, merge by distance. And we're gonna clean this shit up by sliding this forwards a little bit, then sliding this back so it merges here. Now we're gonna slide this forwards as well and take this one and slide it backwards with double G. That doesn't really work out very well. So let's just keep a triangle here. I think it's not gonna be a problem. And we also gotta slide this in because otherwise we have an end on. Make sure you do the same thing over here on the other side, then select everything and merge by distance. And now we're going to go back to front view. Give me another knife cut with K from here to out here. Press C to cut through. Click hit enter. Now I'm going to take these vertices from the corner here and push them inwards on the Y axis like this. And then I'll select all these edges here. Press N and go to edit G stretch. Set the method to spread. Control R. I'll add a loop cut here and another one down here. Take these vertices from the back here and slide them inwards a little bit to fix up the geometry. And take this entire edge loop around this entire shape here. With control B you're going to bevel that. And that's how we get this dent. This is the type of shit that you learn to do if you watch Thomas call in 3d on youtube so go subscribe to his channel if you really want to learn how to do this shit properly now we're going to use these edges from over here to start creating this shape so i'll take these edges p to separate them to new object now i'm going to take this top edge here extrude right click and lift it up on the z-axis then give me the bottom edge extrude right click and lower it down i'll place my 3d cursor right here set the pivot point to 3d cursor and select this scale it up on the z-axis a little bit that way it's going to align with the shape a little bit better now i'll place my 3d cursor onto this vertex so that i can select this one and that way when i scale it it's going to move in this direction and this is going to stay perfectly straight. I'm gonna bring it up to this intersection. I'll do the same thing with this vertex over here. Then I'll just fill this with F. And this edge here, we're gonna extrude until we bring it out to here. Place the cursor right here. Scale this to zero on the X axis. We're going to delete this face in the middle. Make a loop cut like this, like this, and like this. Then we're going to take these three vertices and place the 3D cursor between them. Extrude, right click, and scale down to zero. Select everything and M merge by distance. Fill this face, fill this one, and this one. Now we even got clean topology. Now with Control R, we're going to add a bunch of loop cuts here so that we we have square faces here. Add some more loop cuts here, 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 and also down here on this branch. Once we got squares more or less everywhere, we get the right shape. We're not going to extrude this just yet because we're going to first create the other shape and then we're going to extrude everything together. So to make the other shape, I'm going to take these edges here, duplicate them with shift D and lower them down to here. Now set the pivot point to medium point. Extrude this with E, click here and rotate this a little bit. Now control click over here, then click here. We're trying to follow this curve now. So I'll extrude this through this entire shape and later we're going to adjust this. And it's probably a good idea to select this with L and press P to separate this to new object for now. Then once we get around here somewhere, we better scale this up. And we're going to keep using control click to trace this shape in the background. And don't worry if it's not perfectly accurate, we're going to fix this in a second. Over here, this has to get thinner. So we're also going to scale this down a little bit, scale this one as well. This one probably has to be a bit thicker. Now let's keep control clicking here. And eventually we're going to get over here to the end. We have to rotate this, make it a little bit wider again. And now that we got the rough shape for this, we're going to get back here to the beginning. We're going to extrude this and bring it over here around the corner like this. 
this. Now I gotta go back to Google and find a different picture because I can't see what's on the side here. Here I can see what's going on. So let's open this up in a new tab and I'm gonna throw this on my second monitor. Now with control three on the number pad, we're going to go to left view. We gotta place the 3D cursor right here and with alt E, we're gonna spin this. Reduce the angle to something like 200 degrees, maybe a little bit less. I think 160 is gonna work better. Select all these edge loops that go through this circle. Set the pivot point to individual origins and rotate this a little bit around their individual origin points. Move this vertex out here. Then give me the knife tool, start right here. Align it with the Y axis and click here. Delete all this extra geometry, get rid of this. And this is roughly the shape that we're going for. Next, we gotta start another shape from the front here. So let's duplicate this again, lower it down here, extrude it out to around here somewhere. And we have to extrude again to make this part that sticks up here. And now in side view, this has to come around this corner like this. Let's get rid of the subdivision surface for now so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. Bring this all the way to the edge. We gotta lift it up a little bit. And that means that we also gotta bring this up a little bit higher. So I'm gonna place my 3D cursor up here and select all of this. Use a 3D cursor's pivot point. Rotate this around the x-axis. Scale it up a little bit. Then in edge select mode, I'll deselect these edge loops. Go back to individual origins and scale everything down a bit. Now I'll add a loop cut to the end here. Extrude this and lower it down on the z-axis to around here somewhere. Bring two loop cuts here and we're gonna push this out like this. And we also gotta extrude an extra piece up here. Now give me some more loop cuts to turn this into squares. To make this shape a little bit smoother and rounder, we're gonna select all these edge loops like this. We're gonna deselect this part. Now with N, go over here to loop tools, relax. And then this is going to look a little bit better. Let's get the bottle out of the way. Select everything with shift and correct the normals. Do the same thing over here. Now we gotta cut through this. So let's go to front view. Give me my knife tool from here to around here somewhere. Click and hit enter. Do the same thing down here. Then we gotta cut through this one. So let's cut this way. Let's do a knife cut like this and hit enter. I want the same thing over here on the other side. And then we gotta do another cut over here on all these other parts. And now we gotta make sure that all this geometry is connected. So let's join all these into the same object. And we're just gonna have to slide the geometry until all these shapes are matching perfectly. We can delete some faces on the inside then with our 3d cursor we're going to connect these vertices like this straighten this out with g stretch over here we're also going to try and connect this down here once you figure out a way to connect this it's supposed to look something like this now you can select everything merge by distance and this will allow us to create the shape that we want later on an easy way to connect all this is to select everything with a go up here and activate this option right here called auto merge vertices in the options you're going to check split edges and faces press g to move and click once now deactivate this tool now you just got to delete all the extra geometry and you can very easily connect everything by just sliding it. Now, I'm just going to speed run through this because I don't want to show you everything. I don't feel like sitting here and talking about all this. If you guys want a more in-depth tutorial about how to clean this shit up, then go talk to Thomas Colin 3 d He's the king of topology. I don't have the patience for this shit. So if you guys can convince him that you're going to give him enough views for making this video, he might do it. But if you just want a free handout, the world doesn't work that way. And once we cleaned all this shit up, we're going to select everything. Alt-E, extrude faces along normals. We're going to push this outwards a little bit to give it some thickness like this. And then some areas we're going to have to extrude even further. That's going to be this surface over here. And it's going to stop right here. And we're going to continue this extrusion over here on this side. Up here, we're going to have to extrude this part, but deselect this. No, that's incorrect. We better do this part by part. So let's extrude this first with extrude right click and alt S. We're going to move this backwards a little bit to open up these corners a little bit more. Now let's take all of this here. We're going to select everything like this and extrude that out further. Now we can be extra cool by taking these these other surfaces here also over here on this side up until here and we're going to continue that up here now we can extrude everything out one more time and that's going to give us this nice little gap here and it's going to look pretty good let's slide some of these edges apart just so they're not too close together so we don't accidentally merge something by distance and once you got all the shapes under control we're going to have to add a couple of loop cuts here and there for example we got to tighten this up also the same thing on the other side like this up here as well get rid of this and make a loop cut up here loop cut here also over here on this side a couple more down here and eventually we get a decent shape here we might have to correct the curvature on some points but overall this is pretty good i might make some minor adjustments here off camera now go up here to object shade smooth give me the bottle back and you gotta admit that was pretty damn impressive this is why you're gonna subscribe to my channel right now and make sure to like the damn video too don't tell me you watched this entire video so far for free and you're not even gonna like the damn video and i think it's going to be cool if i select all these edges in the back here and then bevel them with Control b to make that part a little bit sharper Let's use two segments there. And I think this looks pretty cute. Now, I know that everybody's here to learn about the materials. So let's start talking about the materials and how you can render this properly. Now, before we start adding some materials, we gotta set up the environment lighting. This is the most important part in achieving realism. When you look at a cup in real life, the reason it doesn't look like shit is not because of the material. The material is just black. 
because of the reflections that you see in the cup from the environment. So go to Google, type in HDRI, click on this first website, find an indoor environment which looks good. Let's try this mall right here. Download this HDRI and I recommend you download a couple of others as well. Now in Blender, go to shading, switch from object to world, go up here to edit, preferences, add-ons, type in a node, check node wrangler, close this, select the background node and press control T. Now in the environment texture node, open up the HDRI which you just downloaded. And now when you go to rendered view, you're going to have an environment image. I want to make my background transparent, so I'm going to go to render properties, go down to film and check transparent. We're not going to make the glass material yet. We're going to do that in a second. Let's switch back to object here. First, select this part, add a new material. We're going to name that gold, crank up the metallic value, reduce the roughness and set the color to something appropriate like this. We're going to apply the same material to this part over here. And in a second, we're going to add some diamonds and the cap just has to be a simple black material. So we're going to name this black, change the base color to black and reduce the roughness almost all the way down. To make some diamonds here, we're going to go to edit mode on this object and select one of the circles around one of the holes. Shift S cursor to select it and focus on that area. We're going to duplicate this shape and scale it down a little bit. P to separate this to new object. Now select everything and go to edit the loop tool circle. Now fill this, extrude it out, scale it down a little bit. Take every other edge on this outer circle with individual origins. You're going to scale that to zero. Merge everything by distance. Push this out a little bit further. Extrude this. Again, select every other edge from this back circle here. We're going to scale that down a little bit. Now extrude this backwards and scale it down even further to something like this. We can probably just scale it to zero. Select everything merge by distance. It's more or less a simple diamond shape. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Now we're going to select everything and bevel it with control B. I want two segments and a shape value of one object shade smooth. Now we got a little diamond. We're going to place that in here. And when we add a subdivision surface modifier back to this shape here, it's going to fit a little bit better. You can scale up the diamond if you want to then select the diamond, add modifier, generate array, set the X factor to zero and set the Z factor to something negative. That's going to make it fit down here. Crank up the count and try to adjust the Z factor so it fits down here. It looks like something like minus 1.65 works for me. For you, it's going to be something different. Now go to top view and place the 3D cursor in the middle of this shape. Select the diamond object and select all its geometry in edit mode. Alt E, spin, use duplicates. We need 96 steps. Now you got diamonds in every single hole. It might be a good idea to disable the preview for both of these modifiers to prevent you from lagging too much. Remove the gold material from the diamond. I'm not going to teach you how to make a diamond material. Instead, I'm going to redirect you to this video right here. This man made an incredible tutorial for how to make a diamond material. So go check him out. Parent these diamonds to the cap. And now to make a good glass material, we're probably going to have to be in cycles because this doesn't work very well in EV. Go back to shading, add a new material and name this glass. With shift A, we're going to search for glass, add the glass shader, plug this into the surface instead of the principal node. And now when you go to rendered view, this doesn't work very well because we don't have anything on the inside. So we're going to select all this geometry, duplicate with shift D and scale it down a little bit. So you have an inner part shift N, recalculate normals and check inside. Now, when you go rendered view, this is going to have a little bit of thickness. It's probably a good idea to take some of the geometry from the bottom of this hole and lift it up. That way, when you render this, it's going to have a better shape on the inside. And finally, we got to give the inside a little bit of color. So let's select that inner object, duplicate the glass material and call this glass inner. We got the same material. Now we're just going to change the color a little bit. And now if you go to render view, it looks like there's a liquid inside. You can set the color to whatever you want. It might be wise to increase the roughness on the inner part a little bit, but you don't have to do that. That's it. You got your materials ready. Here's a little render that I put together of this object. If you want to see more tutorials like this where we visualize products and subscribe to the fucking channel. And if you felt like I went through this a little bit too quickly, then check out my Blender ebook because everything that I used here is in that ebook. That's going to make all of this stuff a lot easier to follow if you're a beginner. Join my Discord because we're about to hit 4,000 members in there. You can be part of a massive 3D modeling community. Let me know what you want to see next and I'll see you in the next one.